the path she walks is one we'd like to think doesn't exist where we live. You pretty much just survived the only way you know how. $300, one hour, and she'll let him do just about anything he wants. Sometimes they like it really rough and they'll choke you, they'll punch you. But put yourself in her shoes and you'll see the demand for what she's selling. It's all over and it's everywhere and it, you know, it needs to stop. At 29, this woman I'm going to call Sarah is a survivor of human trafficking. She isn't from Eastern Europe or India or Latin America. She's from Madison, Wisconsin. Many women that we see are survivors of childhood sexual abuse and trauma um, that seasons them for a lifetime or years of additional trauma. At 11, Sarah was molested. At 15, her aunt repeatedly sold her to a man for sex. She offered him me for drugs for the exchange of crack cocaine. At 19, Sarah had no job, no home, and four children to care for. She paid the bills the only way she knew how. I lived on the streets. Um, a couple nights, I slept on a park bench. Um, a couple, there was a guy that owned a gas station who liked me, and in order for him to get me a hotel room, I had to have sex with him. Sarah is one of very few who have ever agreed to talk to a reporter after being enslaved. But cases like hers aren't rare at all. Any given time, uh, two to 300,000 uh, kids are being sex trafficked. Wisconsin Attorney General J.B. Van Hollen has made fighting the sexual exploitation of children his top priority. If we don't do anything about it, what they end up being is a, a life of slavery. Uh, and a life of crime. Before 2008, child sex trafficking wasn't even recognized as a crime. Now it's considered a Class C felony under state statute. Yet as the penalties increase, the risk also grows. Girls no longer have to stand on street corners to sell themselves. Predators can reach your daughters right in their bedrooms. We have people who will be trafficking a child for sexual purposes who will actually be pimping them out over the internet, and that's where they'll be recruiting clients. The average age of victims is just 13 years old. Many are enticed or coerced by pedophiles online, or pictures they may text to a friend are posted to escort sites that get millions of hits. They can be from the most affluent high school in the most affluent uh, neighborhood. They can even be from Wausau. You can't ignore the reality, and the reality is it's happening in our community. And I am glad that the legislature recognized that it's happening, and now we have the tools to prosecute and charge this type of a case. This past year, Deputy District Attorney Teresa Whetstone prosecuted the first ever child sex trafficking case in Marathon County. According to a Wausau police report, three 17-year-old girls were recruited by acquaintances to have sex for money with men in the area. The effect that this had on their lives was devastating. Um, their self-worth, they felt degraded, um, ashamed of themselves, guilty, um, you name it. At 17, high school girls should be hanging out with friends, applying to colleges, and picking out a prom dress. But for three Wausau area teens, their chances of having that normal life were ruined in a matter of days. One of the girls talked about having to go back to school after this all came out and how she felt like everyone looked at her like she was a prostitute. In March of 2011, three 17-year-old girls were recruited by acquaintances they had met at a party to have sex for money with men in the area. At that age, as a child, I don't think you understand the significance of what you're getting pulled into. It's the first child sex trafficking case Marathon County's Deputy District Attorney Teresa Whetstone has prosecuted. But that doesn't mean it hasn't happened here before. Child sex trafficking wasn't considered a crime until 2008. It's now a Class C felony. And Whetstone has found it often mixes vulnerable teens with hardened criminals. You have these adults who've had prior criminal records, who know what the system's all about, who know how to manipulate and um, intimidate, and once they're in, it's very hard to get out. The traffickers told the girls to take naked pictures of themselves. Before they knew it, the photos were posted online. Backpage.com is the main website pimps and prostitutes use to advertise sexual services. This is the page for Wausau alone. More than 100 posts just since December. They say sexually suggestive things like, are you ready for real pleasure? 
and the links offer explicit photos, contact information, and details about what each woman will do for money. The three girls in this Wausau case were featured on the website, even though they were underage at the time. Within minutes, calls came in from men who were interested, men who were just passing through town, men who lived a half hour away, and men who lived right down the street. Once that first sex act occurred, they felt it was kind of a point of no return. The girls earned $150 for having sex, but it cost them their self-esteem. Fortunately, police stumbled on the child sex trafficking after it had been going on for only three days. They were responding to a disturbance at one of the traffickers' homes when a victim told them what was going on. She described how she was victimized. She was told certain things, uh, quick money, and uh, she really didn't uh, uh, think it through, and it, uh, it affected her psychologically and physically. One Wausau man, Hassan Al Musawi, was convicted of using the girl's services. However, they told police they had had sex with around a dozen men. We have such a caseload that it's hard keeping up with what we have. Uh, it's difficult for us to be very um, proactive when it comes to those types of cases. The three 17-year-old victims were also convicted of prostitution because under the law, they're considered adults. Doesn't that seem a little counterproductive, though, to charge the victim? Is that just... You know, I have to say that I, I wasn't involved in that part of it. I asked the Department of Justice whether those sold in trafficking cases should be charged with prostitution. They declined to comment. Police say four people are involved with operating the child prostitution ring. Nicole really has yet to plea. She's been accused of driving the girls to the various calls. Dominic West is still awaiting sentencing. The police report says he was responsible for recruiting two of the girls. Daryl Vaughn has been sentenced to three years in prison. He was involved in transporting the girls to hotel rooms and houses and collecting the money after they had sex. Barbie Metzger is facing the most serious charge and will spend five years in prison. Prosecutors say she played a major role in setting up the meetings with the Johns and posted the girls' pictures to Backpage.com. Click, 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 I upload the pictures. Four days later, I'm sitting in Marathon County Jail for child prostitution and child trafficking. Before going to Tachita Correctional Facility to do her time, Barbie Metzger agreed to do an interview with me. Why did you do it? I mean, what would make you want to pimp out these young girls? Well, I didn't know they were young. They were 18 in my eyes. Metzger says she was swept in because she needed money, but says she was also a victim working as a prostitute herself and has been unfairly blamed for running the entire thing, something she says she's not even mentally capable of doing. Why do you think everyone's putting the blame on you? Because I'm the oldest, but really on papers, I'm younger than these girls. I have bipolar, borderline personality disorder, paranoid schizophrenic tendencies, and I'm mentally 15 on paperwork. Prosecutors disagreed. Metzger was ultimately found guilty of pimping the girls and running a place of prostitution. Metzger says she takes full responsibility for being involved at all. It's wrong. Yes, it is wrong, but in the same aspect, you can't prevent it. It happens all over the place. It really does. And to some degree, she's right. Child sex trafficking is everywhere, in our community, around the country, and throughout the world. But law enforcement say there are ways to prevent it. It takes just one click, and a predator can gain access to the most intimate details about your child's life. It's one of the things that's changed from the days of my youth, for instance. You know, your parents would warn you, you know, don't talk to strangers, don't take candy from strangers, don't get in a car with a stranger. Now strangers are able to disguise themselves as friends, classmates, even family members. The Internet has created an entirely new way for child sex traffickers to find their next targets. It's also made it harder for law enforcement to investigate. Criminals are able to entice kids from miles away and pimp them out to a broader list of clients. We definitely could use uh, more enforcement of that because it's uh, a person could go online now and, and hook up within a matter of probably five minutes. It's just so uh, blatant out there. But with few resources and an already heavy caseload of armed robberies, drug overdoses, and domestic disputes, the Wausau Police Department has had to make the tough decision, focus on the more urgent crimes and investigate the sex crimes later. I think it's very dangerous if we have segments of society that are doing nothing. Wisconsin Attorney General Jamie Van Hollen right. recognizes both the strain this type of criminal activity puts on law enforcement 
and the immediate action it requires. In our budget, we have requested a combination of five special agents and analysts to work on child sex trafficking. Um, and uh, right now, we do have agents and analysts who are working on that. Uh, but they aren't specifically designated to that cause, so we take them away from working on our Internet Crimes Against Children, child pornography, and online solicitation type of work. The Department of Justice has also taken several proactive steps in recent years. Wisconsin's Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force provides training for officers so they know how to conduct searches and look at hard drives for things like child porn. More than 180 local law enforcement agencies are now ICAC partners, including several in north central Wisconsin. It's very important that we have this network uh, and we have law enforcement across the state who are made aware of the nature of the problem, the dangers of the problem, and what to do when they encounter it. The penalties can also help deter people. Child sex trafficking is a Class C felony, and a conviction carries a maximum sentence of 40 years in prison. So we're sending a much stronger message, I think, in Wisconsin than in many places, that uh, you can't hide behind the safety of your own computer at home anymore. You have a gr very great risk of getting caught. Now, a lot of those sites traffickers use to exploit children are on local law enforcement and the DOJ's radar, but they don't necessarily want to shut them down completely because they use the sites to narrow in on criminals and help save victims. The Wausau Police Department even conducts sting operations a couple times a year where they pose as a john or a prostitute to try to catch people.